Before I moved to Richmond, a local told me that Richmond is a great town for foodies. And he was right. Whether it's sushi or Szechuan, vegan or pulled pork, Richmond has it all. And this is the perfect time to indulge. So if you have a big appetite, if you want to support a big cause, join me as we hit the town for a Richmond Restaurant Week. Well, thanks for tuning into this channel. I'm Greg Somerville, and I get to help lots of folks just like you who are moving in or to Richmond, Virginia. To subscribe or to book a call, see the description below. I'm here to help you with any real estate needs you might have in Richmond. Twice a year, in April and October, this town celebrates Richmond Restaurant Week. 31 restaurants around town are participating. We're gonna drop in on three of them and see what's on the menu. We're also gonna learn why they contribute a big part of their profits from this week's business to a great cause. Any idea what Paris, Barcelona, and Richmond have in common? They were among the 10 cities named by Essence Magazine as the top culinary destinations in 2024. Bon Appetit says Richmond is America's next great restaurant-obsessed town. It ranks with cities like Nashville, New Orleans, and Savannah as one of the South's best food destinations. So what makes Richmond such a great town for foodies? It starts with the geography. Located just an hour away from the Atlantic Ocean, Chesapeake Bay, it's a great source for the freshest seafood and shellfish. 45,000 farms in Virginia supply fresh, local, healthy, farm-to-table eating. The city has dozens of pop-up restaurants, giving chefs a lot of creative freedom to test new offerings and menus. And speaking of chefs, Richmond has some of the best, including Brittany Anderson, Lee Gregory, Peter Chang, Daniel Harthausen, who won HBO's Big Brunch competition, and Velma Johnson from Mama J's. One out of every nine people in Central Virginia is food insecure. For over 50 years, Feedmore has collected, prepared, and distributed food to these neighbors in need. So Feedmore covers 29 counties in five cities. We go um, west to Farmville, we go to about Louisa, we go east to the Northern Neck, and we go south to the North Carolina border, Brunswick, Emporia, South Hill, South Boston, Mecklenburg. And we're able to do that with our network of partner agencies. And these are people like church food pantries, soup kitchens, feeding sites, daycares, after school programs that are out there feeding people in the community. And they're able to come to us and get their food at a much reduced cost than what they would have to if they were buying it directly from a store. With more than 20 trucks, 100 employees, 200 daily volunteers, over 400 distribution partners, they provide more than 35 million pounds of nutritious food each year. Richmond Restaurant Week started over 20 years ago with less than 10 restaurants. It was started by Aileen Reitzer over at Acacia, and as a restaurant tour, she wanted to find a way to be able to give back, but also highlight the restaurants. So she got a group of other restaurants together, all locally owned Richmond restaurants. Over the years, it's grown, and um, they've given us over a million dollars over the 20 years. Each participating restaurant is offering a three-course meal for $35.24, with $5.24 donated to Feedmore. Last fall for Restaurant Week, that was over $50,000. So that donation helps us provide over 200,000 meals. Restaurant Week is a wonderful opportunity to not only support Feedmore, but support our local restaurants. So it's a win-win, win for the restaurants, win for Feedmore, and you feel good and you get to go out and you get to enjoy an amazing meal and know that you are doing good while you're enjoying great food. Welcome to Soul Taco, where the food is fun, playful, and flavorful. Located here at 1215 East Main Street, it's owned by Trey Owens, who's open every day of the week except Sunday. Soul Taco was featured on the popular show Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. It blends traditional Latin American flavors and Southern food to combine a unique fusion dining experience. I'm looking at the menu and there's some great options. We've got Flaming Hot Cheeto Elote as an appetizer, Chicken Tinga Enchiladas as an entree, and Banana Pudding for dessert. Well, I feel a little bad that I came during the afternoon before the crowds get here. Trust me, this place is going to be packed. And why do they come? Because a taco without a soul is just a sandwich. Ten years ago, renowned Richmond chefs Lee Gregory and Joe Sparata 
teamed up with local farmer Matt Gutwald to create Southbound. Located here at 3036 Stony Point Road, it's considered to be Bonaire's favorite family restaurant. Southbound serves inventive new American dishes with southern influences in contemporary wood accented surroundings. It's open for lunch Tuesday through Friday and for dinner Tuesday through Saturday. Like other participating restaurants, Southbound offers a variety of appetizers, entrees, and desserts for the one fixed price. If you come this week, you can have hush puppies as your appetizer, blackened catfish for your entree, and bread pudding for dessert. Need I say more? I'm sitting outside Laura Lee's restaurant at 3410 Sims Avenue. The owner, Kendra Feather, was named Restaurateur of the Year by Richmond Magazine in 2013. She named this restaurant after her mom. It's open for dinner every night of the week and offers brunch on Saturdays and Sundays. Monday is a meatless night with vegetarian special. Every Wednesday, they offer a different wine and pasta special. And every third Thursday, they have a sober happy hour. The restaurant week menu looks amazing. Lots of options, but if I'm looking at this menu, I'm going to go with the chilled spring pea soup, seared scallops for an entree, and the apricot almond tart for dessert. Love the spot. We live in Woodland Heights in here, and we come here usually like once or you know every once every week or so. When we go for a walk and uh, have a drink and some you know some food, and uh, it's a great neighborhood bar. That's why I like it. A couple years ago, when they when probably been seven eight years now. But when they first came in, it was, it was a great addition to the uh, neighborhood, and so, so we keep doing it. Yeah. Well, I don't think I'll be opening a restaurant in Richmond anytime soon. I did manage to make a lot of box mac and cheese in college. And based on my West Virginia roots, I've often joked with friends about opening a restaurant called Poor Pete's Pinto Bean Palace. No investors so far. I should probably stick with real estate. But after watching this video, if your mouth is watering for Richmond and its restaurants, give me a call.